Hi, Gemini Sun and Rising. Welcome to your June 2024 astral update. It's Raina here. So I'm recording this in early May, and I want to give a shout out to all of you Geminis whose birthdays are in May, because since this reading is for June, i probably going to be uh, referencing June birthdays, but definitely some of you are going to have May birthdays. So happy birthday to all Geminis. This is your season and you should feel good physically because um, the sun is in your sign or is forming in conjunction with your ascendant at some point during the 30 day period. And the, well, what I mean is the 30 day transit of the sun in Gemini. This is a general reading, so keep that in mind because when these events happen are going to vary from person to person. I just keep it simple because I, I actually started this reading over again because I get a little bit confused when I try to uh, talk about it from multiple house perspectives. So I'm just going to shut up and <laughs> read what's in front of me. So, um, Right away on the third, your ruler Mercury goes into Gemini. And Mercury is a ruler of Gemini, as we know, because I just said it was your ruler. Whether you're the sun or the ascendant in Gemini, you can uh, speak about the ruler of your sign as your ruler. So if your sun is in Gemini, Mercury is your ruler, but you also need to know what your rising sign is because that sign, that, that rising sign's ruler is your ruler too. And it's actually the ruler of the chart. So in any case, um, three days later, the new moon is at 16 degrees of Gemini and it's happening on 6-6. Six, six. That's a, that's a portal. When I said 6-6, six, six, it was 222 into this recording. So that's pretty, that's way cool. And that's a portal, uh, uh, the six, six portal, which, uh, the number six is ruled by Venus. Um, so it might be actually a great time for material manifestation. I don't know much about the portal dates and what they represent. I, I know about numerology, so I'm assuming that it has something to do with, uh, Venus uh, attributes. And so that would also involve manifesting love or even twin flames. Um, so, you know, the divine feminine, divine masculine. So in any case, um, this is this uh, six, six portal is happening on the new moon in Gemini. So I think that's way cool. Definitely something to do with your transformation in life. New things are coming in for you. You have Mercury, your ruler, and your sign. On the 9th, Mars goes into Taurus, and that means that Mars is going into the 12th house. I have a late degree Taurus rising, so when I saw this, I was like, oh, damn, you know, because uh, Mars in the 12th house is not you know, fun and games, uh, from the standpoint of Mars being very physical, being very active in the 12th house, being very contemplative, but you know, it is what it is. It's a very, uh, fast moving transit. It won't be there like Pluto for years and years. So thank God for that. But it's not that bad because actually, um, some of you may be working on something behind the scenes. This is actually a great time until mid July. We have all the personal planets free of retrogrades, but you may be doing something kind of secretively, which the 12th house represents. And this is a good time to kind of put things into motion because the, uh, we're, you know, coming out of a new moon period and, you know, the 12th house can mean that you are doing it behind the scenes. And that is good from the standpoint of not 
uh, kind of putting everything out there so that people can pick at it and try to second guess you. If you feel restless, do you can do um, Hatha yoga, asanas, uh, especially ones that balance the nervous system. On the 17th, this is interesting too, in my opinion, Venus and Mercury both go into Cancer. The reason I'm saying Venus first, Mercury is closer, you know, is um, a faster moving planet, but it's actually entering Cancer after Venus. So that's why I'm saying it second. Venus and Mercury go into Cancer on the same day. That's kind of like unusual. I don't uh, normally see that kind of thing happening. Not that it never does, but I, I think it's very interesting. And, um, for you, this is the second house of earned income. Venus is the ruler of the second house. So it definitely has, um, you know, a, uh, an ability to operate at the highest level when it's in its own domain. Uh, Mercury can, th what this says to me is that you may come up with a money-making idea. So if you're intentional about it and you're like kind of, yeah, what I mean by being intentional is you may hear me saying this, but I'm saying it so far in advance. If you happen to remember this somehow, you may actually, um, respect your ideas because, um, I know for myself, sometimes I think of something, I think, wow, oh yeah, that would be a great idea. And then I just kind of, you know, dismiss it because it's, you know, some people are not, um, proactive about just right away doing something about whatever it is that they, they come up with. Other people respect their ideas because maybe, they assume that it's coming from a higher place. So I'm, I'm thinking that maybe there might be something here that is um, going to be very good for making money. And again, it's just coming a few days after the 6-6 um, six, six portal. So that's pretty cool. Then on the 20, 20th, we have um, the summer solstice. And, uh, this year it is on the 20th. I always think of the summer solstice on the 21st, but, um, this is obviously every year. Um, and this is when the sun goes into cancer and it is considered a powerful time because the, um, it's a change of seasons and every season is represented by a cardinal sign, in this case, cancer. So it re cardinal signs represent energy, um, or I would say movement, um, action, and change, you know. So that's happening. So again, you know, that that's the sun going into your second house. And the very next day, this is something else that I find very significant, is that um, there's a full moon at one degree of Capricorn, the opposite sign of Cancer. You know, that's what full moons are, the sun opposing the moon. And, I, you know, for me, this almost gives off um, new moon vibes because it's it's at one degree, it's happening right after this big shift of uh, the seasons changing. And by the way, I, I should have said, you know, if you're down under, this is winter. Uh, <laughs> I mean, every t everything is going so quickly. I remember when it was uh, the winter solstice and they were, you know, an astrologer that I was listening to was saying, oh, and yeah, if you live in Australia or New Zealand or whatever, this is your summer. And I'm like, you know, I was almost like furious, you know, they get to have summer and I'm like freezing over here. But yeah, so, um, this is at one degree of Capricorn and, um, for Gemini people, this is your eighth house. So, um, this is a very powerful full moon, uh, for you because 
in the eighth house, we're talking about Scorpio's domain in astrology, and it represents transformation. That's what the eighth house represents. You could say death, but uh, any kind of ending that is, you know, part of an eternal beginning. And this can be something that is you're letting go of, but it's the, the, the eighth house is a shadow self. So there's a very, uh, deep, intense influence. Um, the fact that this is full moon, you know, that is happening because it, it tends to excavate those buried, um, emotions and events. You know, the eighth house can be the house of trauma. Um, and for, for Gemini, especially, this isn't like your favorite thing. This isn't your cup of tea, but I know that I'm generalizing because some Gemini people are very soulful. They're very, they, they're very sensitive. They, you know, you're adjacent to cancer. So you may have inner plants and cancer. Your moon sign can be anything. So you might have a moon in water. Your ascendant might be in water. Um, and so you may come across as much more of a water sign in some cases, but, um, anyway, uh, this is a great time to let go of addictions and obsessions. The eighth house is obsessions. I actually think that, um, addiction is a form of OCD because there's a compulsive element, but also an obsessive element, um, so the eighth house is one of the houses that is always mentioned when it comes to addictions. And I think it's especially the case when a person is trying to um, either numb their pain or kind of like forget things that have happened that are very traumatic, uh, which is kind of a similar thing. Um, you may have an aha moment that is connected to something that you have repressed within yourself. Um, but even on a physical level, I think that this is a great, uh, purification time. People will fast sometimes at full moons and uh, or go on diets and things like that. So, um, but there's a, there's definitely for, for Gemini people, there's definitely an, an internal component because this is a water house. Some of you may experience this in your, I would say in your seventh house. So that might have more relationship issues attached to it. But I will say that even in the eighth house, this can, uh, be something to do with another person simply because, uh, full moons can be about relationship issues. The sun and the moon representing those, uh, archetypes of the, the male and the female, um, or the polarities when we talk about relationships in general. And then on the 29th, um, there will be Saturn retrograding at 19 degrees of Pisces. And Saturn will be retrograding for months on end. Um, I don't know when it goes direct. I think it might be November, but don't quote me on that. Um, so Pisces is a fellow, fellow mutable sign, and that means that it is coming from your 10th house of career. So uh, what does that mean? Um, well, when Saturn is in your 10th house, it can be a time when you really get serious about career matters, uh, including good old fashioned hard work. However, when Saturn is retrograding, there's something that might be an obstacle that is preventing you from achieving something or even like ambition. But all of this, because Saturn rules the 10th house, 
So this is its domain. But it's also, uh, you know, with any retrograde, it's something that is going, the person is going within. And this is about your inner ambition. Uh, 10th house can be authority figures. So even if you're middle-aged, you can be looking at your career and saying, you know, is this really what I came here to do? Or did am I tr pleasing my parents? And I'm like 35 years old, 40 years old. Am I pleasing my parents? What am I doing here? Um, or even like, you know, what it is, how you're going about it. Um, Saturn can be your drive or not your, I think that would be more Mars, but it can be your ambition, your goals, your discipline, your organizational abilities. And you may kind of like let that all go for some reason, but there might be a good reason for it actually, because um, if it's not working, if you don't feel like you're making progress or if you, your heart isn't in it, then, you know, really white knuckling it and trying to make it work seems kind of foolish. So if s things feel like they're slowing down career wise, you'll know why. And you'll know that rather than trying to double down that it's really a good idea to go within and to, to, to do some soul searching and see, you know, really where you're, where you're going with this. Because you also have Neptune and when Neptune goes retrograde, that, that can be very, um, disillusioning. Uh, I don't know when Neptune's going retrograde, but it's going to be this year sometime. And the disillusionment can be because Neptune sprinkles fairy dust on things. So in the 10th house, you know, a person can be very idealistic and dreamy about what it is that they want to do, but they might, you know, you had Neptune here by itself for years. And when Saturn arrived, it might've been like a killjoy a little bit or, or what have you, but it's giving you that structure. That's what really uh, Saturn also provides the groundedness to make things happen. And so, um, it's just really about retooling and re structuring, um, what it is that you're doing so that you have the best results and you get, you can achieve those goals that will likely benefit you from, for years to come because Saturn can provide that if the person is intentional and is really, you know, looking to the future. And sometimes Gemini people don't, sometimes you're living in the moment. And so it's a good thing to have this in your back pocket, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I have for you, Gemini. I hope that this resonates. And if you would like a private reading, this is a great time to get a deep dive reading with me. This is a package deal that I offer. It's probably my most popular reading overall because it is, um, two readings in one and the, each one is at least an hour long natal chart interpretation. If you've never had one of those, or even if you have, you might uh, get a totally different type of reading. Who knows? But um, that's coupled with looking at transits for the next 12 months, which when you're having your solar return, or if the sun is coming into your first house, um, it provides you some uh, themes for the upcoming solar cycle because, um, it's, you know, I do give specific dates, but I, I like the bigger picture of like, okay, what is really the theme for my life at this time? You know, you have Jupiter in your sign, so we can say off the bat, we can say expansion. We can say new opportunities, new growth. It could be new self growth. 
and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, so there's that, that reading and I have other readings. You can find out more information at the link below. I'm at rainamoonastrology.com. Thanks for listening. Take care. Bye.